we've got to not only stay in the street, but we've got to fight for justice. But I am very hopeful, and I hope uh, that we're going to get a verdict that to say guilty, guilty, guilty. I don't know whether it's in the first degree, but as far as I'm concerned, it's first degree. It's well, we, we got to stay on the street, uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they they know that we need business. So there's a reason police were all over the streets and cities across the country last night, and it's that. It's the threat of violence. And Maxine Waters threatened violence before the jury had even begun to consider the facts of the case. That's so far over the line that we read some Democrats were shocked by it, and yet no one condemned it. That includes the president, and it includes the most powerful people in the Democratic Party. Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer of Maryland. They came out in support of Maxine Waters. And then state media, literally state media, public broadcasting system, came out today with an explanation at the White House press briefing. Watch this propagandist explain what Maxine Waters really meant. Um, Representative Waters, as you said, clarified, she said, my actual words don't matter. I wonder why the White House isn't also coming to the defense of Representative Waters, given the fact that she's now facing an onslaught of attacks, especially by, I would say, Republicans. I wonder why the White House isn't saying, we, we back what she said about being confrontational. She was obviously not threatening violence. There are civil rights leaders that are saying that's what that's what civil rights is, is to be confrontational, to be active. Well, she, could, she also clarified her own remarks, Amy. And I think that's the most powerful piece to point to. <laughs> that lady works for you. She literally works for public television. And there she is ardently flacking for lunatic Maxine Waters at the White House press briefing. Oh, it's all normal. Don't worry. It's always been this way. It hasn't always been this way. And our leaders haven't always talked like they're seized by religious fervor. Here was the Speaker of the House today thanking George Floyd because he died in order to make the Democratic Party more powerful. For his sacrifice, she said. Watch this. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. Because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. So unless we can change the law, this will be an episode. If we change the law, we're going down a different path altogether. So the guy dies on the sidewalk, and here this lady comes out and politicizes it so completely that he becomes sort of Democratic Party saint. Thank you for your sacrifice. This is grotesque. It's a cult, obviously. But what does it mean for the rest of us who have to live here under the leadership of people like that? Candace Owens is the host of Candace. We're happy to have her on tonight to assess what we're watching now. Candace Owens, you'd think in a country like ours, very top, I mean, this is the most first world country that's ever been. You'd think the most civilized and the most just. Here you have to consider a murder case through the lens of politics. When you get to that point, haven't you already given up civilization? Well, that's correct. And what we're really seeing is mob justice. And, and that's really what happened with this entire trial. This was not a trial about George Floyd or Derek Chauvin. This was a trial about whether right. the media uh, was powerful enough to create a simulation and decide upon a narrative absent any facts, whether it was powerful enough to repeat showing and talking about a nine minute clip that came from somebody's cell phone without adding any context, without showing the full, you know, the full police video, which they could have released. They refused to release the full body cam, which would have added more clarity um, to the fact that the media was lying. You know, the media came out. Let's not forget this, Tucker. The media came out and told us that this was a man who was just getting his life together. He was a good, you know, good member of society. And he got mixed up because a racist white police officer had it out for him and, and killed him. All of that fell apart. All of the facts came out and all of that fell apart. We now know, of course, that he had enough fentanyl in him. It was three times the lethal dosage, three times lethal dosage in him when he died. But nobody cares because the media was successful and putting out a narrative and they kept hitting that narrative. And the reason why the Democrats are happy is because they realize, of course, the media supports them and now means the Democrats can get whatever they want because they can create a narrative and then they can treat people like pawns and get them to basically say, if we don't get what we want, we will riot, we will loot, we will send these people out like soldiers to destroy your neighborhoods. And that is exactly what has happened. That has been the determination of this trial. The media and the Democrats now have enough power to bully, to bully and to lie to and to create propaganda and to successfully win. And that is what happened. And they are celebrating that win today. 
This was not a fair trial. Only one side. No person can say this was a fair trial. You just got to take three steps back and acknowledge that only one side behaves this way. I mean, yeah. a, a jury in 1995 concluded that O.J. Simpson, despite DNA evidence, hadn't murdered two people and there were no riots. But more to the point, there are a lot of people sitting behind Trump voters sitting behind bars right now have been for months charged effectively with trespassing. We're not speculating. We've seen the charges. No Republican in the Congress stands up for them. Nobody mentions that nobody, you know, is for prison reform when it's their political enemies. That's not equal justice, but nobody says it. Why is that? Because we have two pandemics going on right now. There's a pandemic of ignorance in this country, and that is only allowed to fly because we also have a pandemic of cowardice in this country, okay? So we have people that are, are purposefully putting out a bunch of ignorant ignorant claims, and then we have people that are too cowardly to stand up and say, you know what, this is wrong. There has been so much that has been going on in this country that is wrong. You talk about it, I talk about it, but we do not have people that are sitting in Congress that are willing to take this fight where it needs to be taken. By the way, you bring up Maxine Waters inciting violence. I'm so old, Tucker. I remember when a man said, march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol, and that was considered an insight to violence, right? That was like, oh my God, stop the press, get this person disappeared from social media because he is calling for violence. Look at what Maxine Waters says. No one, no one in the media is condemning these and uh, condemning these remarks. That same media that contemned, condemned Trump and his supporters for weeks on end is now defending Maxine Waters. And we both know this is not the first time that Maxine Waters has incited violence. Don't forget, rush down. If you see a Trump supporter, you got to rush him down in the restaurants. They're allowed to do this. They play by a different set of rules, but it's because we allow them to play with that different set of rules. They get away with virtually everything because we don't have strong people on our side that are willing to stand up. You know, and, and, and that it's a sad conclusion. It really is so frustrating. And the idea of martyring George Floyd, the way Nancy Pelosi spoke about him, it completely forgives all of the trauma that he brought against his victims while he was alive. You know, a man that served seven plus stints in prison while he was alive, armed robbery being two of the reasons why. And now we're going to martyr him and say that your name will forever be synonymous with justice. Imagine, Tucker, if you are one of his victims that is alive, one of his victims that he armed robbed, and you have to hear that this man's name will always be synonymous with justice. How would that feel to you? I feel like we are living in fiction right now in America. We are losing this country and we are living in fiction because people are not strong enough to call out this stuff. And I feel like I'm one of the only ones who has the courage to say, I will not be mobbed into a different reality. This is where they try and pull you off the internet because you're not afraid. I just gotta ask you, it's, so, it's frustrating of course to watch what you and I have been talking about where one side ferociously defends its power, the other side abandons its voters to jail. I wonder though, is there a point where just ordinary people can say, you know, I, I'm not in control of politics, but you're not allowed to block my street with a protest or intimidate me uh, on my front lawn or break into my store and steal stuff. Like I'm gonna defend my family, I'm gonna defend my business. You don't have a right to do that. There's no justification for riots anymore and I'm just not gonna put up with it. No. Will we get to that why, point, do you think? No, we're not going to. That's why they're already moving the ball. They're already moving it. They're moving the goalpost already because they're saying right now that that's not enough. That wasn't justice, by the way, because what they're saying is what they want is a perpetual revolution. It's why they want people to be ignorant. It's why they want people in the education system to learn nothing but race and how to be angry. They want people acting like toddlers because when people are ignorant, they act like toddlers. They whine, they complain, they cry because they are absent facts. They are absent knowledge. So we are actually seeing a systemic oppression that is taking place that is rotten. It is throughout our, the propaganda that's taking place in the mainstream media, and it is working with the education institutions, teaching critical race theory and all of this nonsense to make sure that we are mass producing failures that are angry and that are violent and that are willing to riot and loot on behalf of the Democrats, because that's all they want right now are pawns in their nefarious scheme to take over this country. It's gonna make people radical, unfortunately. That's a shame. Candace Owens, it is great to see you tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you.